webinar on sequencing the project activities. As part of this, we will be discussing about six points. Point number one is precedence diagramming method. Point number two is four kinds of graphical relationships. What is lead? What is lag? What kind of dependencies we can have across activities? And then we will take an example uh, and then we'll apply on a practical case. First, let us understand what is precedence diagramming method. Precedence diagramming method is we actually it is kind of a network diagram. Here we will represent activities on nodes. Okay, if you see here A, B, C, D, E, F are all um, basically represented in the nodes. Just like a human body at the bones, okay, like at this particular node, we represent activities. So, activity on arrow is one way of representing the precedence diagram. It will show how activities flow across from the project. That means from start to finish, it will give you a visual way of how activities are sequenced and also plotted across so that we will get clarity about the activities of the project and how they are flowing. And it, this way, we can also sequence the activities properly. So, before we start understanding sequence, the project sequencing, activity sequencing, we first need to represent activities using precedence diagram method. It is nothing but a network diagram and it's basically where activities are represented on the nodes. Now, before we understand the sequencing, we need to understand the activities and their graphical relationship. So, one activity here we call activity A is a predecessor activity. That means this is it. It, it can basically, it's basically. It's a predecessor activity that means it's an activity where there is no condition it is free okay whereas there is activity b is a successor activity that means there is a condition applied on it that means if you see here activity a is a predecessor activity that means it can start independently as far as these two activities are concerned whereas activity b is a successor activity that means there is a condition, there is a rule applied on activity B. If you see the arrow, the arrow is beginning at activity A and pointing to activity B. So, wherever the activity is pointing to, it is called basically successor activity. Wherever the activity is beginning, it is basically called as, in the, a, as a predecessor activity. So, from now onwards, we will be discussing about predecessor activity and successor activity. Predecessor means there is no condition applied, it is free to start with respect to the activity B. Whereas activity B is a successor activity, here uh, a condition is applied on that activity. That means with respect to activity A, a condition is applied on activity B. Okay, now let's now understand what kinds of graphical relationship we can have across um, across different activities okay number one first of all there are two kinds of variables we will be talking number one is activity a is it's a state of is first is state another is rule so state is applied on the predecessor that is the first activity whereas rule is applied on activity b okay so let's talk about it first thing is activity a it's there is a state that is finish state is applied on activity a and the rule is start is the rule applied on activity b so here we call this as activity a finish to start relation here uh, we can basically once the activity a is finished then only activity b can start so if you see here 
first thing is two variables number one is state of predecessor predecessor is the beginning of the arrow okay and then successor is where it is pointing to okay here if you see here it is pointing to here okay so it is finished to start relationship so the state is finished means on predecessor once the activity a is finished then the activity b can be started okay so this is what is the significance of this particular diagram let us understand use, using an example for example let us take a race competition and let's take a ceremony award ceremony so first the race competition needs to be finished then only the award ceremony can be started so that means if you see once the activity a is finished then only activity b can start that is uh, the the awards screen the awards ceremony that is successor cannot start until the race predecessor has finished so here we are having finish to start relationship okay the activity a the race competition need to be finished then only activity b the ceremony can start the award ceremony can start so this is finish to start relation as i said there are two variables here number one is the state of predecessor which is finish here that means the predecessor that is the race race competition needs to first finish then only ceremony can get started so this is called finish to start relationship so it can also be understood saying the award ceremony that is the successor cannot start until the race predecessor has finished so as i said here the predecessor has a state the predecessor is where the activity is getting started that means race competition is predecessor that is what comes first and then <coughs> the ceremony the award ceremony is what is a successor that means a rule is applied on ceremony the state of predecessor is finish means once the race competition is gets finished then the ceremony the successor activity can get started that means if you want to start the successor that is the ceremony award ceremony the race competition needs to get finished so the way we need to read it is the race competition must first get finished then only the award ceremony can get started let us take another example foundation of the pillar must first be finished then only construction of the pillar can get started so the state of the predecessor here is finish the rule applied on the successor that is construction of the pillar is start so the predecessor the foundation for the pillar must finish first then only the construction of the pillar can get started so this is what is called as finish to start relationship so let us take another example to understand it better for example if you are building a software feature as feature set the building of the feature integration testing of this feature and you know um, making sure that the whole feature set is available for feature features if i call that as building the feature this entire set i call that as building the feature that must get finished first then only the user acceptance test can get started so here i am saying the predecessor activity where the arrow is getting started that is the building the feature activity that is a predecessor predecessor here the state of the predecessor here is mentioned as finish so the building the feature must finish first then only the successor that is user acceptance test can get started okay so uh, so this is the finish to start relation let us now understand finish to finish relationship in finish to finish relationship okay now the the predecessor is activity a the state of the finish predecessor is finish whereas the state or, or the rule applied on the successor is activity b so on the predecessor is free to start that that is why it is having a state whereas successor a rule is applied on it so for the act, first the activity a must finish first then only the activity b can be finished 
if you see here in this particular diagram, it is very clearly mentioned saying, you know what, first A activity must get finished, then only activity B can get finished. That means it can, can, it can get finished at any point in time, but first it should make sure that it should make sure that activity A should get finished. Okay. Now, next point. Let's take an example. Now, writing a document that is the predecessor here. The state that we assign to it is finish. So, the successor here is editing the document. If you see the arrow, the arrow is ending and pointing at editing the document level. So, the rule that is applied is finish. So, the predecessor which is the writing, writing a document must get finished first and then only the successor editing the document can get finished. This is an example. So, this is finish to finish relation. In this point in time, editing, editing the document can get finished at any point in time after writing the document get finished. If you look at it in different way, editing document cannot first, first writing document should get finished first. The predecessor must first get finished, that only the successor can get finished. So, that is why it is called finishing to finish to finish uh, relationship. Let us go to the next point, start to start relationship. Start to start relation is here the arrow is starting at activity A, that is why we are calling this as activity A. So, activity A must get started. So, the state of predecessor is start, whereas the rule applied on the successor is start. So, it is called start to start relationship. The predecessor that is activity A must get started first then only the predecessor that is the successor that is activity B can get started. I repeat the predecessor that is activity A must get started first then only the activity B which is the successor can get started. So, it is called start to start relationship. Once the activity A is started then only activity B can get started. So, the successor activity B cannot start until the predecessor activity A has started. So, my dear friend, it is called start to start relationship. Let us take another example here saying pouring the concrete and level the concrete. So, level the concrete which is the successor, it cannot start until the predecessor which is level the or which is the pour the concrete starts. I repeat level the concrete which is the successor it cannot start until pour the foundation which is the predecessor starts. So, the predecessor must first get started then only the level leveling the concrete that is the successor can get started. This is the example of start to start. Now, let us talk about uh, start to finish. Generally, start to finish dependency is used in reverse scheduling. For example, when we have a target date, if we are doing a reverse calculation or reverse scheduling, then this kind of dependency is used. Start to finish. For example, here the arrow is beginning at activity A. So, acti activity A must get started for the activity B to get finished. Let us take an example here. Okay, activity A. So basically, here if you see the act, the arrow is pointing in backward direction. That's where I told that in reverse scheduling, whenever we are scheduling projects in given a target deadline, when we do a reverse calculation, that is where we use this dependency start to finish. Okay, so let's take an example here. Here, for example, we have a thermal power station and we have morning shift and uh, a first shift which is which starts at 6 a.m. till 2 p.m. and second shift from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Okay. Now, when we set up a relationship called start to finish where your predecessor activity which is second shift which is 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. unless the second shift person comes and takes over the charge the first shift person cannot finish his activity. That means, 
For example, if there is a strike, okay, and people are um, restricting the second shift person, that is a person who is supposed to take over the charge from the first shift person who is doing his shift from 6 a.m. in the morning. If somebody stops the second shift person, if you set up a relationship called start to finish, because the second shift person did not start it, uh, the, his shift, the first shift person cannot finish. So this is the dependency called start to finish dependency. Okay. Let's go to the next point. So what did we do so far? We have recap. We have understood four kinds of relationship: finish to start, finish to finish, start to start, and start to finish. So these are the four kinds of relationship. Let's do some quick question here. So I wanted to ask you, you can type in the chart window, for the successor trading to get started, the predecessor stock market has to get started. This is an example for, can you just type in the window here at the, at the left, what is the right answer? Uh, can you just type here at the top at the left side left hand window what is the right answer here for the successor trading to get started the predecessor market has to get started this is an example of if you see okay option b yeah, so all of you, I request all of you to type your uh, type your answers here at the left hand window. Okay, I request all of you to to attempt here. So let, let's go to the answer. It's a start, start to start dependency. Here it's very clear for the successor trading to get started, the predecessor stock market has to get started. So this is an example of start to start relationship. Thank you. Let's get on to the next point. What is lead? Okay. Yeah, thank you for your answer. Let's get on to the next question, lead. Okay. So lead. If you see here, lead is nothing but advancing the successor with respect to predecessor. Lead is nothing but advancing the successor with respect to predecessor. So, for example, let's take an activity A, which is activity A takes 5 days and activity B takes 5 days. So, total there are 10 days. So, this is what it is. So, who, what is the successor here? What is the successor here? Can you type here? What is successor here? Because the arrow is pointing towards B, B is the successor. What is the predecessor here? Can you type here at the window? What is the predecessor? The predecessor is activity A. Right? So, if you ask me here, so total because a takes 5 days, B takes 5 days, so total it takes 10 days. So that is what it is. Now if you apply lead of 2 days, okay, if you apply lead of 2 days, right, so that means now you are advancing, you are advancing the successor by 2 days. That means activity A takes 5 days and the predecessor B, you are advancing it by 2 days. That means your basically total duration is getting shrink to 8 days. Okay. A is predecessor, B is successor. That's correct. Uh, so, we are advancing the successor by 2 days. So, you are advancing the successor with respect to the predecessor by 2 days. That's why the total duration is 5 plus 3, 8 days. Because you have advanced. 
means the activity B now can get started two days earlier than earlier situation. That's why it is taking eight days. Let's get on to the example. For example, you wanted to build a feature and it's taking five days. And you have you want to do UAT, it takes five days. Now, if you have if you infuse or if you apply a lead of two days, what is lead? Lead is nothing but advancing the successor with respect to the predecessor. So here you are advancing the start time of successor by two days. We represent that as FS finished to start minus two days. Actually, if you don't apply the lead, it will be FS. That means the UAT can start only after the build activity can get finished. So because you have applied a lead of two days, we are representing that as FS minus two days. Minus two days means you can start your UAT, user acceptance testing, two days earlier than the finish time of build. That means if five days is what build takes, from fourth day onwards, you can start your UAT, that is user acceptance testing. So that's why when you apply a lead where you advance the successor by two days, that means you are actually gaining a time of two days. So that's why in this scenario, you are basically completing this activity within eight days. Okay, now let's get on to the next one. So if you see here, when no lead is applied, okay, when no lead is applied, it is taking 10 days. When lead is applied, it is taking eight days. Okay, now there is a question from Krishna uh, Satikar. I, why it is advanced? Isn't that reduced? Yeah, when I say advanced, well, that means it's pre-pawned. <coughs> Krishna, when I say advanced, it's getting pre-pawned. That means activity B, its beginning is getting advanced. That means instead of starting the activity B at the end of fifth day, you are starting, is basically you are starting B at the end of third day. That means fourth day onwards you are starting. So you are advancing. Advancing means you are advancing the commencement of scheduled time, scheduled start of activity B. That's why I'm using the I'm using the word advancement. So the lead is applied on successor. The lead is applied on successor with respect to predecessor. So the advancement means we are basically uh, you know bringing it up front, advancing with respect to predecessor. So ideally speaking, when no lead is applied, you are actually starting the activity on sixth day. <coughs> Whereas now because of the lead, you are basically applying, you, you, you can start your activity B because two days of lead is applied, you can start your activity from fourth day onwards. Okay, thanks Krishna. So this is what it is. So now let us now understand what is lag. Lag is nothing but delaying the successor. It is just opposite of lead. For example, in the earlier case where activity A takes five days, activity B takes five days, when no lag is applied, it is ten days. Now, if you apply a lag of two days, that means you are delaying the start time of successor with respect to predecessor by the lag time. So lag of two days here, lag of two days is applied. So the total, that is why your total duration is coming to five days for activity A, two days of lag plus five days of effort for the expected duration of B. So 5 plus 2 plus 5, which is actually 12 days. So when 2 days of lag is applied, your overall total duration is increasing by 2 days. That is by the amount of time that lag is specified. Okay, let us take one example. For example, let us assume a scenario, regression testing. Once people completed, once the team completes regression testing, and then you may take 2 days to deploy the solution or to make some configuration okay so that user acceptance can get started so you are applying a you are applying a lag of two days see here it's L, not leg it is leg okay so a lag of two days is applied so regression takes five days lag of two days that is the, the start time of uat is getting delayed by two days that is the lag and then total time is 12 days. So this is what is lag. Okay. Any any question on lag and lead?
lead is advancing that means you are bringing the start time of successor little bit earlier whereas lag is you are delaying the start time of your successor in both cases we are applying this rule only on successor and we do this with respect to the predecessor activity any questions on lead and lag okay let's move on to next point that is called dependencies <coughs> there are four kinds of dependencies mandatory discretionary external and internal okay mandatory dependency is is basically hard dependency means generally they are like legal um, dependencies or contractual obligations that we are supposed to meet so mandatory means we must meet it and there is no other go discretionary is preferred prefer preferential logic basically based on earlier experience or earlier lessons learned or best practices team wants to put this kind of dependencies for example you may come across a situation this activity is complex i know it we must put uh, sub subject matter experts here or uh, we must put uh, architects here so this is what i learned in the past so that is called discretionary dependency the next one is external dependency these are generally applied outside the project team control for example if you if to start a testing activity you may require some hardware to get delivered to you there's an external dependency it's basically sometimes it may not associate with project activities it is beyond the control of the team internal dependency means uh, it is basically set within the team for example if we cannot test a machine we can until assemble it means we need to first assemble a machine then only we can test it there is internal dependency so generally dependencies fall under four categories mandatory that means these are legally contractual obligations discretionary preferred uh, logic based upon our past experience external dependency meaning these are basically they are not related to our project activities but they are set from outside okay so similarly the hardware has to be arrived it has to be on premises and somebody some third party vendor must uh, must uh, supply this hardware then only i can start testing internal i mean it's basically based upon our across, among our internal team we have dependency so these are four kinds of dependencies any questions on dependencies okay i am moving on to the next slide let us take a practical example so where we are trying to apply all these whatever we have understood okay we are trying to apply this to a practical case okay so let us take some integration project okay integration of features on integration setup must get first finished then only i can start integration testing let us assume there is a scenario okay in this scenario we are saying that a finish to start relationship is set between uh, integration of features on integration setup must first get finished then only integration testing can get started okay so let's get to the next thing so here next dependency is start to start dependency meaning integration testing must get must get first started then only integration bug fixing can get started means here the predecessor activity please uh, focus on the red symbols here right the the start to start relationship between the blue boxes the integration testing must get started first then only integration bug fixing can get uh, can get started mean, meaning integration testing get started maybe first after one day after two days after three days that's okay but for integration bug fixing to get started for the successor activity to get started the predecessor which is integration testing must first get started that means again i am repeating the predecessor integration testing should get started first then only the integration bug fixing activity can get started that is called start to start dependency now there is a third dependency i am putting which is finish to finish meaning there are two kinds of 
activities I'm putting. First thing is integration testing first get finished, then only integration sign off can be provided. So it is called finish to finish. Similarly, integration bug fixing must get finished first, then only integration sign off can be provided. So it is called finish to finish in both cases. So integration testing must be finished first, then only integration sign off can be finished. Integration bug fixing must get finished first, then only integration sign off must get finished. This is the second point. Now so far we have seen finish to start, start to start, finish to finish. Now, now I am talking about regression and deployment. So if you see the arrow is pointing to, the tip is actually pointing to the regression and deployment, that is start. The arrow is beginning at integration sign off. So integration sign off is my predecessor activity. Integration, uh, integration, regression and deployment is my successor activity. So the arrow is beginning at integration sign off, that is my predecessor activity. The arrow is pointing to regression and deployment, which is my successor activity. So when I set finish to start relationship, integration sign off must first get finished, then only regression and deployment to production can happen. Okay. Let's get on to the next point. Now, after regression and production deployment get first, it has to get finished. Then only post go live support by forward engineering, that is the developer who who actually developed the solution, the post go live support starts. That means when I put a finish to start relation, my the successor is post go live support by forward engineering developers. That is my successor. That is where the arrow is pointing to and that is where the rule start is set. The state of predecessor is regression and deployment that is finished here. So the first thing because it's a finished to start relationship we should call like this regression and deployment activity must get finished first then only post go live support by forward engineering developers can get started. So so far we have gone through three kinds of relationships. First is finish to start, start to start, finish to finish. Okay. The only thing that we have not covered so far is start to finish. Let's see how it happens. See here what is happening. For example, now I have set the relationship post go live, go live support by operations team. So post go live support by operation team is my predecessor. I have put as start activity there. Post go live support by forward engineering, that means the people who actually develop the solution is finished. Meaning, when I set the relation as start to finish, that means what is my successor here? Post go live support by forward engineering. That is where the point the, the arrow is pointing to. Please go go through it. This is where the arrow is pointing to. So because the successor, the arrow points to successor, so my successor is post goal of support by the forward engineering developers that is the people who actually developed. What is my predecessor? Predecessor is post goal of support by operations team. I repeat post goal of support by operations team is my predecessor. Arrow is beginning there. Arrow is pointing to or ending to post goal of support by forward engineering that is my finish relationship. So it is start to finish relationship. The way we have to talk is the predecessor should first the predecessor should first get started that means post go live support by operations team must get started first then only post go live support by forward engineering developers who actually develop the solution can finish for example in a scenario where the operations team are not confident of handling the post go live issues that means they have not actually started so that means the, the actual developers, the forward engineering team, they can't just run away. They can't say, okay, so and so date has reached. I have given you this date. Till that date, uh, till this day, I will uh, ensure my developer support is there. So they can't say that statement because there is a start to finish, finish relationship is set. Only when the actual go live support by operation team can get started and they are confident, then only the uh, developer, the forward engineering developer, can complete their shift or can complete their support. This is the significance of start to finish. 
So if you see through this example, we have covered finish to start, start to start, finish to finish and start to start. So using the, the routine example, I mean this is the example that we come across in our day to day life. So using this example, any questions here? In this example, do you have any questions? You can type here in the window. Any questions? You can type in the window. Okay, I am proceeding to the next. Okay, so what we have learned so far? We have learned precedence diagram method where we said we can actually represent the activities on, uh, on the nodes. We have also talked about four kinds of graphical relationship, leads, lags, dependencies and we have taken, we have taken an example. Okay. Okay, so Vishwanath P is talking about one more relation, finish to finish. Yes, we have taken finish to finish relationship here. Uh, Vishwanath, I'm just going back to this thing. If you see here, integration bug fixing and integration sign off is finish to finish. Yeah, Krishna, yes, we will follow this relationship in MPP, Microsoft Project Planning. So, Vishwanath, uh, we have basically covered uh, finish to finish relationship with respect to integration bug fixing and integration sign off. Again, see, it is all context specific. You can put any specific, but see, at the end of the day, it has to communicate the business business constraint we have between the activities. Okay, there is one question from Vishwanath. I think there has to be finished. Yeah. See, basically, see, we can always argue, you know, why you finish to finish, why not start to start, you can always, we can always argue. See, at the end of the day, what I am communicating here is, there are four kinds of relationship, okay, finish to start, start to start, finish to finish and start to finish. Now, we can put it as per the business context we have, uh, right, so currently I put the relationship in this way in this example. But in your business, if the meaning is different, the constraint is different, you can represent it. At the end of the day, using these four kinds of relation, definitely we can communicate any kind of business constraints we have. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So, Abhishek is talking about, yes, Abhishek, I will make sure that the recording is also available for you. Yeah. So, then, uh, next point. So, what we have learned? Yes. Yeah, so what we have learned, we have learned all the six cases, precedence diagram method where we learned how to represent activities on nodes. There are four kinds of relationship, as I said just now we covered finish to start which is mostly used, start to start, start to finish and finish to finish. So, so these are the four kinds of relationship and then we applied lead, lead is nothing but advancing pre poning the start time of successor with respect to the predecessor. Lag. Lag is applying or delaying, delaying the um, start time of successor. Okay. So that means um, with respect to predecessor. So in both cases this rule is applied on successor only with respect to predecessor. Lead means you take it forward, that means you take it earlier. That is where we are calling it as advancing lag is delay delay make make sure some delay is applied means delay the successor dependencies four kinds of dependencies are there one is mandatory another is uh, preferred preferred or discretionary third one is internal fourth one is external and we have also walked through a case now let us go through the important question why is this topic needed okay why is this topic needed? Number one, even though people are matured on the ground and they are qualified, for whatever may be the constraints, I have seen people, whenever I go and ask, or whenever I have seen people, can you just let me know how much time you take? They basically say, okay, feature one, 10 days, the for QA takes quality assurance, that is testing, it takes five days, feature two, development, 20 days, 
quality assurance that is testing for that feature two five days integration testing five days regression testing five days user access testing 10 days so total they take 60 days i see people are just adding the effort to come to a conclusion of how much time it takes there may be a lot of constraints may be there whatever it is but basically we need to apply a project manager a project lead must apply his intelligence his knowledge to make sure what kind of dependencies are there certain times we need to apply lead certain times we need to apply lag and we need to explain to the stakeholders why lag is needed if you want me to remove this lag i want this to be procured at the earliest so we need to talk that project management knowledge okay similarly when activities are you know arranged in parallel way you can actually crash the schedule okay so i am not saying that everybody is following this but i can certainly say if you see here my message is very simple the simple message is project sequencing project activity sequencing on the ground it's not happening to the fullest sense because of which we are not able to arrive at realistic schedules when the realistic schedules are not coming it is applying lot of stress on the team and ultimately we are not able to provide right solution at the require at the time that we are committed either we are if customer is soft enough okay we may be getting more time if the customer is intelligent enough, intelligent enough because we are not applying this logic saying that you know finish to start relation start to start relation start to you know, finish to finish or the kind of dependencies we have or leads and lags because we are not using this language and communicating the business constraints the team is having because the project lead or project manager is not communicating this language not thinking in this language we are not able to do justice to the profession of project management and because of which our schedules may are are going to a, a wrong sense and because of which there's a lot of stress is happening and ultimately even we are not able to deliver on time so for example i come across a case saying that you know a, a person a developer uh, gave an estimate of 20 days then somebody comes in, oh no no the both those activities can be started parallel so why are you putting 10 days and 5 days 15 days you are giving so then you have to say no they can get started but i have to apply an a lag of 3 days or i have to apply a start to start relationship here because i first the activity must get started and then only i can get start another activity so this language we need to bring that's the whole purpose of this webinar the point is this sequencing the project activities is a very simple task all of you can understand all this jargon but the point is we need to apply this on the ground and that is where we do justice to our profession of project management so so project management is an important profession and project manager does influence the success of the project so that is where this webinar is dedicated to to the project managers so with this i want to uh, conclude this webinar and i can take questions at this point in time any questions